Today on May 6, 2020, Shopify became the largest company in Canada on the TSX, and they surpassed RBC to get there just after they reported stellar quarterly earnings. In today's video, we'll be going over the financials of the company that they reported in this quarter, as well as the earnings call. And lastly, I'll be giving my opinion on the business and the company, as well as what I think about the current valuation. And one last thing I want to share with you guys is my theory on how Shopify might get into advertising based off of what they presented in their quarterly earnings call. So you'll definitely want to stick around for that. Welcome back to The Fire Grind. My name is Daniel and on this channel we talk about personal finance. We have a particular interest in the stock market and how we can use this investment vehicle to achieve financial independence. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be going over Shopify today as they just reported their quarterly earnings and I want to break it down for you guys and just give my opinion on what I think about the company. As I have been doing a series on Shopify and if you haven't checked out my previous two videos, you can click on this playlist up here to watch them after this video. So let's dive right into the financials and just see what the company reported this quarter. Before we break down the revenue, we need to understand Shopify's business and they have two revenue segments outlined in their income statement. Their first stream of revenue is the subscription revenue. And how this revenue is derived is basically from their subscription plans that they sell to merchants who use their platform. So it's like a monthly fee. And on top of that, they add in their charge for themes, for domain names, as well as apps. So this is how they generate their subscription revenue. And the second stream of revenue is their merchant revenue. And this is a whole suite of different products that they sell to their merchants. This includes their Shopify payments, which is the bulk of what makes up their merchant revenue, as well as their transaction fees. So this is essentially when merchants use other types of payments like PayPal, for example, Shopify will charge a transaction fee for that. And next we have shipping and fulfillment. And this is a new stream of revenue for Shopify as they are starting to branch out into the shipping and fulfillment business to help the merchants get products to the customers in a quick and easy manner. And lastly, we have Shopify Capital. And this is essentially a loan program that they offer to their merchants who qualify for this. I actually talked about this in my previous video and I'll just link that right up here if you wanna know a bit more about Shopify Capital and what the future of this revenue segment is gonna be like. And now diving into the numbers. For the revenue, we saw a growth of 46.65%. And that's essentially Shopify grew the revenue from 320 million to 470 million in one year. In each segment, we saw the subscription revenue go from 140 million to 188 million. This represents a 34% increase year over year. And the merchant side of the revenue, we see they went from 180 million last year to 282 million this year. And that's a 57% growth. And in the previous year, the merchant revenue made up 56.1% of the revenue. However, this year it makes up 60% of the revenue. So we can see that the merchant solutions are actually growing faster than the subscription revenue. This is a good thing, I believe, because merchant solutions should make up the bulk of their income. As their merchants grow in size and volume, they're going to be taking in more payments and require more loans. This is only going to boost the merchant revenue. Their subscription revenue won't increase as quickly because it takes longer for the merchants to move from a small business to a medium business to a large business. And Shopify will capture an increase in subscription revenue if a business moves from their basic plan to their Shopify plan to their advanced plan and eventually to Shopify Plus. And each of these tiers have a different pricing model and you can see that on the screen right now. Now going over the cost of revenue, we can see that it grew about 52% year over year. So it's actually growing quicker than the revenue itself. And we see that the cost of subscription revenue went from 28 million to 38 million, representing a 35% increase. And the cost of merchant revenue went from 112 million to 175 million, representing a 56% increase. And now digging into the margins, we can see that the margins stayed fairly consistent year over year. For the subscription revenue, it's around 80%. So the subscription revenue is really their high margin business, whereas the merchant solutions is around 37 or 38%. And Shopify's total margin across both revenue segments went from 56.25% and actually dropped down to 5467 This is largely due to the higher merchant revenue. And now turning over to their gross profits. They increased their gross profits from 180 million 
to 257 million, representing a year-over-year -year increase of 42.5%. So we can see that the gross profit lagged behind the revenue as well as the cost of revenue. And this might be slightly worrying for some of the investors as they see the growth decline in their gross profits. Now if we move down further into their income statement, we can see that their operating expenses went up roughly by 50% in each category with the exception of their transactions and loan losses. And this actually went up by 300% but the fact that their previous value was around $4 million versus $14 million it makes up a very small portion of their operating expenses. And the total operating expense growth year over year is around 52%. So again, this is growing quicker than their gross profits. I'll be going over later on why I think their revenue is growing at a slower rate than their cost of revenue as well as their operating expenses. Now looking at their bottom line, they have a comprehensive loss of around $48 million and this is compared to a loss of $14.9 million last year. And their net loss per share is around $0.27 cents per share compared to $0.22 cents the year prior. So although the business is increasing their revenues year over year at a fairly high rate, we can see that they're still losing money on the bottom line. Management also reports income in a different way where it's more tailored towards Shopify's business. It's not the generally accepted accounting principal income, but it can possibly be a better indicator as to the growth of Shopify's net income. And this suggested net income was $22.3 million or 19 cents per share, compared with the adjusted net income of $7.1 million or 6 cents per share last year. And now looking at the share count, we can see that the share count has increased by about 6 million shares. And this happened when they did another public offering in September last year, where they raised $600 million. And now turning over to the balance sheet to see the health of the company in the short term and possibly the long term. So if we look at the current ratio, we can see they have a current ratio of 9.45, which is an extremely healthy current ratio. This shows that they can go multiple years without needing to make a penny at all in order to pay for their current liabilities and possibly even cover some expenses. And current liabilities are liabilities that will need to be paid off within one year. So we can see that Shopify has nine times the amount of current assets compared to the debt that they owe in the next year. And now looking at the cash ratio, this is an even more stricter metric to measure the financial stability of a company. It's essentially comparing the cash equivalents to the current liabilities. So things like inventory and prepaid expenses don't count in this. And the cash ratio is 8.2. So actually quite close to the 9.4, meaning that they have the cash to pay off their liabilities eight times over. And one thing you'll note is they have a lot of money in marketable securities. Basically a little over half their cash is in marketable securities. And what marketable securities are, they're essentially either government bonds, government loans, or other money market funds, where a company will typically deposit cash in there so that it can collect interest for about 12 months. And now switching gears to the cash flow statement, we can see that on the cash flow statement, it showed that they generated $319 million in cash, despite posting a net loss. And the bulk of this cash flow came from the maturity of their marketable securities. So essentially, their one-year government bonds or some money markets, they came to maturity and Shopify collected the proceeds from that investment. Now, if we look at the highlights that management gave in their quarterly earnings report in the press release, some of the highlights I want to pull out are the first one being Shopify capital advances and loans increased from 150 million to 192 million. So this roughly represents a 25 to 30% increase year over year for Shopify capital. And I think the reason why Shopify has such a great cash position right now is because they're trying to build up the Shopify capital portion and they need cash on hand to be able to loan out to their merchants. So maybe this cash that they're storing up in marketable securities or just in their cash accounts is really used to help back their Shopify capital business. The next thing I want to highlight is their GMV or gross merchandise volume. And in this quarter it was 17.4 billion. And this is actually a $5.5 billion increase from the previous year. And the gross payment volumes was $7.3 billion. And this represented around 42% of GMV. Gross payment volumes is made up of all the payments customers did through Shopify payments, whereas gross merchandise volume is the total amount of payments including Shopify payments as well as third-party providers such as PayPal. And one other thing I want to highlight from their presentation is just the growth of their GMV 
the gross profits, as well as the revenue. Now, if we look at these graphs, we can actually see that the year-over-year -year increase is steadily declining. Originally, it was around the triple digits, nearing 100% growth year-over-year, -year, and that was maybe four or five years back. However, it has dropped since, down to a 50% year-over-year increase. So we can see that Shopify is actually slowing down in their growth of their gross profits, the revenue, as well as their GMV. And this is representative of the company hitting a large enough scale that is difficult to grow at rapid rates, such as 100%. 50% is already quite good for a company that has captured 5.9% of the US e-commerce market. If you've gotten any sort of value out of this video so far, please just take this moment to smash that thumbs up button as well as subscribe to my channel as I continue to make more videos on Shopify. And now back to the analysis. So jumping over to the earnings call, I picked out quite a few points here so you guys get some good color around what management thinks about the business. So things they've done this quarter to make merchants' lives easier and enhancing the whole experience on Shopify is providing merchants with the ability to sell gift cards. They've also assisted merchants with curbside pickup and adding this feature to the point of sale system. This is a hardware unit that Shopify sells to their merchants to accept card payments at brick and mortar retail stores. And another value add service that Shopify has provided their merchants is they've been updating the resource center for merchants with information on how to weather the current pandemic storm. Another thing Shopify has done to make their merchants lives a little easier is they've unlocked $200 million more of capital that they're able to give out as loans to their merchants. And they've also expanded the geographical locations where these loans are available to UK and Canada. And lastly, they also rolled out Shopify email, which essentially replaces MailChimp. And this service they've offered to the merchants for free until October in 2020. Management also mentioned that there's been a notable increase in stores that are opening. It's actually a 62% increase in the last six weeks of the quarter compared to the prior six weeks. It's also large stores such as Heinz, which sells ketchup, and Lint, which sells chocolate. And both of these large retailers actually open up their stores within five to seven business days of signing a contract with Shopify. So we can see that retailers are adapting very quickly with this whole pandemic happening and quickly shifting onto online e-commerce and Shopify is definitely a huge beneficiary of this. Management also spoke about what their thoughts are on the fulfillment business, and I think this is very key to Shopify's success. Because right now, as a consumer, and I'm doing my own online shopping, I think the biggest pain point for me to go to other retailers other than Amazon is the shipping times. Shipping times can range anywhere from three to even 20 days if you're shipping from China. So I want to read a quick snippet from the earnings call to give you an idea of what management thinks about Shopify fulfillment. So this is Amy Shapiro, their CFO talking, and she says, starting with Shopify fulfillment network, which remains a top priority. Now more than ever, timely and affordable fulfillment is important to our merchants and their buyers. We intend to continue developing our fulfillment network over our planned five-year timeline, focusing on achieving product market fit before entering our scale phase in 2021. So they're gonna be scaling their fulfillment business in 2021, meaning next year. Demand continued to ramp in Q1 as Shopify fulfillment network had its highest number of merchant signings in a quarter since inception. And we fulfilled more volume in the first quarter of 2020 than the fourth quarter of 2019. And this speaks a lot because the fourth quarter of 2019 was actually Christmas time. Usually Christmas time has the largest volume of packages compared to the quarter right after, which is actually the slowest time because people are done with spending and they're paying off the credit card debt. Our partner warehouse operations managed to improve service level in Q4, despite the challenging circumstance presented by COVID. If Shopify can penetrate into the fulfillment service and give this value add service to their merchants and offer something similar to Amazon like two day shipping, then I think merchants on Shopify are even more competitive. And as a result, I think only more merchants will flock to this platform because no other e-commerce solution out there is offering this. And this will only be fueled by the current pandemic situation because we know that shipping times are even more delayed due to the increase in volume of packages, as well as the whole safety concern of people working in the mail industry. And Shopify gave some color into how their fulfillment business is ramping up. With their acquisition of Six River Systems, they've actually made improvements to the robot called Chuck. 
They said that Chuck is bigger, stronger, and also easier to use, which translates into quicker times for moving merchandise from A to B in a warehouse. So Shopify is sinking a lot of capital into building out Shopify fulfillments, and this is probably where the bulk of their expenses are increasing, where they're spending a lot more of their capital into building up this fulfillment center, which is currently actually generating a loss for them because it's still quite inefficient and they don't have quite the sales volumes to make it profitable. However, I think in the long run, as they get more merchants into their fulfillment business, they can make a profit off of this eventually. And the last thing from the earnings call, I just want to read one more quote from Amy Shapiro on what she thinks about the long-term prospects of the business and how they're going to weather the storm and what Shopify might look like coming out of this all. She says, We expect new norms and trends will benefit Shopify under different economic scenarios. And there's also what I call the multis, which will likely help us. We're multi-channel, we're multi-vertical, and we're in multiple geographies. Those are all playing to our benefit. As the diversity of our merchant base has been helping and will continue to help, we are not dependent on any one merchant. And lastly, I think our agility, speed, and balance sheet strength are all helping us in this environment. The headwinds are obviously the uncertainty of COVID and how it plays out, how it impacts the economy and unemployment in particular. The impact of businesses and consumer spending is an unknown the further we go out into the time. I just want to add that we are well capitalized to weather any of these economic scenarios with a strong balance sheet and will continue to invest in those key areas that will benefit our merchants and help us come out on the other side stronger. So we can see that Amy Shapiro, although there's the uncertainty of the whole pandemic happening, she's very bullish on the business for the long term because there are a lot of tailwinds for Shopify. So now I'm going to go over my thoughts on what I think about Shopify after this earnings call and what my thoughts are on the business long term. So I think that Shopify will continue to soar and their stock will continue to store because of the whole ecosystem that they built around merchants and people see this as like an Apple play. We can see that Shopify engages in providing their merchants with e-commerce websites, analytics, payments, shipping, fulfillment, loans, apps for their stores, themes, point of sales units, email marketing, small, medium, and large customer support, which will help smaller customers flow through this whole channel to become a large customer eventually one day. And lastly, their partner ecosystem. This partner ecosystem connects experts in the industry with merchants to give professional help to merchants. Services that these partners can provide are in marketing, advertising, brand development, and also website development. The next point that I wanna make is that online e-commerce right now is actually being forced to accelerate because essentially any brick and mortar store can't sell in that location and they need to shift to an online e-commerce platform. So a lot of retailers are forced to adapt and adapt very quickly. And there are a lot of needs that are being exposed by these new merchants coming online and having different business models and Shopify is doing a ton of learning right now. And management has been alluding to Shopify moving even quicker to service these new customers with new business problems, as well as helping their existing merchants on their platform adapt to the current times. And what this means for Shopify as a business is that they're going to get quicker responses from their customers and be able to implement solutions and test them out. And what this means for Shopify's product development is it's just going to be fast forward a lot quicker because they're getting a lot more feedback they're getting more input from the customers and therefore they're able to iterate their product at a faster rate. Typically in a growing tech company, the biggest problem for growth will be trying to get that user feedback and getting meaningful user feedback. But the fact that customers are literally depending on Shopify to continue the business, they're going to be willing to give Shopify quick responses and tell them if they don't like something because that will affect the bottom line of their business. This is all the more critical for small and medium businesses who have not set up an online e-commerce presence and they're shifting over from brick and mortar to online e-commerce right now. The next thing I want to talk about is Shopify fulfillments. And as I mentioned, I think this is a huge opportunity for them because this essentially will complete the entire ecosystem in my point of view. Currently Shopify provides their merchants with a way to brand their stores, to set up a store within days, to do marketing, and as well as customize the web page with different product descriptions, 
and provide customers value through things like articles. However, the one missing link that they have in this all is the shipping time. I think the shipping time is the biggest pain in the butt for e-commerce because typically when people go out to shop at the mall and they buy a product, they want it that instant. And that's because we are basically living in an instant culture. And currently Shopify is working on the solution to provide their merchants with the ability to ship just as quick as their competition. This competition is mainly Amazon, as Amazon holds about 50% of the US e-commerce market. I think this fulfillment business could actually take Shopify from their current levels to even Amazon levels. Because people on Amazon, they might actually switch over to Shopify because they can set up a specific branded store to service their customers better and also market their products in a more unique way versus the plain old boring Amazon posting, which kind of looks the same and has the same formatting, same text, and the same few points as all other merchants on the platform. So Shopify will be able to give these other merchants a way to differentiate themselves from other merchants, as well as take advantage of a short shipping time that Amazon currently offers. Next, I think Shopify is actually essentially the operating system for online merchants. And I think merchants will continue to flock to this solution because setting up a custom solution in-house, hiring your own developing team, or outsourcing it to another third-party developer team to do it for you and maintain is very expensive. Where Shopify, they provide the backbones such as the payment system, the databases, and even things such as themes and merchants can take advantage of this and they can hire a smaller in-house development team to do the customizations. And now I want to talk about the huge vertical that I think that Shopify can capitalize on as they build out their whole ecosystem. And this is advertising. Right now, it doesn't seem like Shopify stores are connected at all. However, if you look a little deeper, Shopify actually started to launch a couple apps. If you look at the shop app that Shopify recently came out with, this is a platform for all the shops to get together and consolidate into one place. And consumers like you and I are able to go on the platform and save our stores there. So how Shopify will get into advertising is mainly through their shop app. And the shop app to me is like an online mall. And on this app, Shopify will be able to sell space to individual stores to advertise to customers and promote different promotions that they're having or different sales that they're offering right now. And definitely look at the download rates on the respective app stores, either the iOS or the Android app stores, to see how many people are downloading this app. And currently on the Android store, we can see that the shop app has over 1 million downloads. And you'll definitely want to keep tabs on how many downloads this app has because it is a good indication of how many people are building their own virtual mall. And basically the shop app is another way for Shopify to connect their merchants with their customers rather than going through other channels such as Google, YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. And the last thing I wanna talk about is what am I doing with Shopify right now? Am I invested in Shopify? Am I planning to open a position? And my response to that is currently I'm not invested in Shopify and I don't plan to open a position just quite yet at these valuations. In the past, I have been an investor in Shopify and if you want, you can check out my video linked right up here where I talk about when I was an investor in Shopify. However, looking at the valuation, I can't justify putting money into the business right now because the financials and the fundamentals don't make sense to me. Looking at their market cap, in US dollars, they're valued at around $86 billion, whereas their sales are only $1.5 billion and they're only making a net income with the adjusted net income of $31.4 million. Or if we take their gap income, that's a net loss of around $48 million. So a company with a loss of $48 million commanding an $86 billion market cap? That just doesn't make any sense to me right now. I know that Shopify has a lot of verticals that they can expand into, and this seems to already be priced into the stock based off of their current valuation. But the fact that it's already baked in, this means that Shopify has to execute flawlessly in order to continue keeping up that valuation. But currently with a market cap of $86 billion and with a P ratio of somewhere between 400 and 500 or even 3.3 thousand, which is reported on Yahoo Finance, I think this company is way too expensive for me. And the price to sales ratio is 45 even. And if we compare Shopify to Amazon, Amazon's price to sales ratio is only 3.9. And Amazon already commands such a rich valuation. That means Shopify is like 10 times overvalued compared to Amazon. 
And if we do some napkin math to see how Shopify's valuation can equal that of Amazon's in terms of PE and PS ratio. For the PS ratio for Shopify to reach 3.9 and at current growth rates of 50% year over year, it's gonna take them 6.6 .6 years to reach that. So basically I need to wait 6.6 .6 years in order for Shopify to actually fit into the current valuation and have a PS ratio of 3.9. And this is all assuming that Shopify's valuation doesn't go up in 6.6 .6 years. In order for Shopify to command a P ratio of 30, which is already quite rich for a technology company, they need about 7.7 .7 years with 50% growth year over year on their adjusted net income, not on their gap net income. So this is assuming that their current year, they're gonna make $31.4 million times four quarters, which is around $125 million. And they essentially need to have a net income of $2.87 billion to be able to have a P ratio of 30. So looking at these numbers and how long it'll take Shopify to actually grow into this valuation is definitely not a buy for me right now. The only way that Shopify will convince me to change my position on whether I'm making an investment in them or not is if their growth actually starts to accelerate again into maybe 70 to 100% year over year. And this very well could happen with their fulfillment service, with their advertising vertical that they might enter in later on down the road. But for now, these aren't certain. So I don't think I'm gonna be making an entry into this company right now with their current valuations. And for the price target that I would set if I were to make an entry into this company is if it dropped into the 500 Canadian dollar range. And this happened actually in March where I could have bought, and this is actually when I made my first video on Shopify, and you can check that out right here too, on five bullish points about Shopify. And the very last thing that I wanna talk about is the price movement in Shopify stock in today's trading day. And we can see that Shopify actually jumped up by 6.94% in the day. And this is already with a huge run up from around $800 per share last week to around 977 yesterday. So they continue to gap up with this so-called seller's earnings call, but to me still the valuation doesn't make sense. And I think the reason why they gapped up is because shorts were covering their positions. We can see that from March 13th to April 15th, the short volume actually doubled. It went from around 2.9 to 4.5 million shares being shorted. So these shorts saw this good earnings report and they had to cover their positions. And therefore this is probably what caused the Shopify stock price to uptick by about 7% after already running up $200 per share. So if you made it this far in the video, please just smash the thumbs up button as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I hope I've provided you a lot of value into what it means to be a Shopify investor and what you're signing up for if you're buying shares. As well as definitely keep this stock on your radar and I will be continuing to make more videos on this company in the future because this is really the tech darling of Canada. And this company, I love what they're doing in the space although I'm not a current investor in it, but I am looking for entry points into this company because I believe in them in the long term and that they could eventually become a trillion dollar company one day. But they haven't shown the growth yet that I need to see in order to make that investment. And who knows, they could be another flop like BlackBerry, but unlikely in my books based off of what I've seen and how they're capturing more and more market share and really just looking at the whole e-commerce space and doing research on YouTube, on Google Trends, no other e-commerce provider is providing as much value to merchants as Shopify is. Keep up the grind and have a great day.